Президент Российской Федерации Владимир Владимирович Путин. Владимир Владимирович Путин. Добрый день, уважаемые господа. Good afternoon, gentlemen. I cordially welcome you to the ceremony of presenting credential letters. Despite the necessary and the well-known restrictions in this context related to the coronavirus epidemic, we believe it is important that we hold this event as the tradition goes in the Kremlin. And I personally would like to congratulate you on the official beginning of your diplomatic mission to Russia. Wish you successful, fruitful work to promote cooperation between your states and the Russian Federation. Make no mistake, all your positive beginnings and initiatives will always find the most benevolent feedback, support and assistance from the Russian authorities as well as business circles and the general public. Colleagues, this year has become difficult to us all. It has become an unpredictable year. The world faced the coronavirus pandemic, as I have already mentioned. This required extraordinary measures, both in Russia and in every state you represent. It is my firm belief that as we face this unprecedented challenge, the international community has no other alternative rather than joining hands. Since the cornerstone is represented by the fundamental value, the life and health of our people. As you are aware, Russia has already developed and uses the world's first coronavirus vaccine, Sputnik V. We have registered the second one, Epivac Corona. Now it is important that we launch mass production in Russia and start mass vaccination. The third one is in the pipeline. We are ready to share our experience with every interested states and international organizations. With some foreign partners, we are already working on supplying this vaccine and, and launching local production of this vaccine. Additionally, the pandemic exacerbated problems in the global economy, trade, social, environmental dimensions. We still have to deal with our old problems and challenges such as international terrorism, drug trade, organized crime. The entire system of international security, strategic stability and arms control is under heavy pressure. I would like to emphasize optimal, appropriate solutions to these problems can only be found with the equal participation of every member of the international community based on the universally recognized norms of international law with the coordinating central role of the United Nations. This year we celebrate the anniversary of the establishment of the United Nations and the end of the Second World War. 75 years ago, Nazism was defeated, the ideology of aggression and hatred was crushed, whereas the experience and spirit of alliance, understanding of the tremendous price paid for peace and the common victory allowed laying the foundation of the post-war world order, this spirit of alliance, commitment to fair mutually beneficial partnership is especially in demand today. It is my conviction that despite the current difficulties and disagreements, we have to energetically remove these disagreements to promote the uniting international agenda. That's something we were guided by, by suggesting an initiative to hold a summit of permanent members of the Security Council, that is, countries who are especially responsible for ensuring stability and security in the world. We hope that this summit takes place in the face-to-face -face format at that, as soon as the epidemiological situation allows us. Let me know that Russia, together with other countries, participated in this month in some prominent international high-level events uh, in the framework of BRICS, Shanghai Cooperation Organization, the Forum of the Asia-Pacific Economic Cooperation, G20, as well as the 
East Asia Summit. Uh, and I hope that the implementation of agreements reached uh, in their wake will contribute to overcoming not only the impact of the pandemic, but also to improving the worldwide context, ensuring and making the whole global development sustainable and predictable. Let me also specify that Russia has recently taken significant measures as an intermediary in uh, settling one of the oldest conflicts. We have taken energetic efforts to stop combat in Nagorno-Karabakh, which claimed thousands of lives of the people of our friends, Azerbaijan and Armenia. We followed key agreements reached within the OSC Minsk Group, specifically between its co-chairs, Russia, the United States of America and France. The main that we have achieved is to stop the bloodshed, to specify in the trilateral statement by the presidents of Russia, Azerbaijan and the Prime Minister of Armenia, the ceasefire. Now the region hosts in accordance with this statement Russian peacekeepers. They monitor the compliance with the ceasefire. They ensure security of civilians, escort returning refugees and humanitarian cargoes. The situation in general is stabilizing. The Russian Humanitarian Response Center is starting its functioning. It will provide assistance to the residents of affected areas, restore infrastructure, providing conditions for normal, peaceful life. And we hope that uh, international, relevant international organizations take a substantial part in these efforts. We assume that all these creates prerequisites for long-term and full-fledged settlement of the old conflict on, the on an equitable basis for the benefit of the Azerbaijani and Armenian peoples. Gentlemen, by tradition, as the tradition goes, I would like to say a couple of words about the relationship between Russia and uh, each of your states. We support further strengthening of good neighborhoods, uh, neighborly ties with the Democratic People's Republic of uh, Korea, whose 75th anniversary of liberation was uh, celebrated this year too. Its freedom and independence were secured by the Korean patriots fighting side by side with the warriors of the Red Army. We are ready to promote efforts uh, throughout the entire range of bilateral uh, agenda, as was agreed upon during the highest level Russia-Korea meeting in Vladivostok last April. As to the nuclear problem of the Korean Peninsula, our view is well known. It has to be addressed by diplomatic means only, by negotiations. Our relationship with the Republic of Rwanda is developing in a friendly manner. The Rwandan colleagues actively and meaningfully participated in last year's first Russia-Africa summit in Sochi. In accordance with the agreements reached there, we expand cooperation in such dimensions and as energy, including the atomic one, geological survey. We'll continue training Rwandan civil and military professionals in Russian universities. We intend to strengthen mutually beneficial ties with the Islamic Republic of Pakistan in economy, trade, energy, ensuring regional stability. We are satisfied with the partnership with Islamabad within the United Nations and the Shanghai Cooperation Organization. It is based on the commitment to international law and close views on the majority of key foreign policy issues. We believe that uh, we could uh, engage more actively and more in a more versatile manner with Lithuania, especially considering that we are close neighbors. We are ready to cooperate based on principles of good neighborhood, respect for each other, and we would like to see the same attitude on the part of our Lithuanian counterparts. We have good relationship with uh, Sri Lanka. We are committed to further enhancing mutually beneficial cooperation, trade, economic, cultural, and humanitarian fields. Our countries positively engage uh, in the international scene, specifically within the Shanghai Cooperation Organization. There, Sri Lanka has a dialogue partner status. We we'll maintain partnership with the Republic of Peru. We work jointly within the United Nations and the Asia-Pacific Economic Cooperation Forum. We express solidarity on such 
important international aspects as countering terrorism, drug trafficking and organized crime. We sincerely hope that the leadership and people of Peru will be able to successfully overcome the current domestic political disagreements while acting within the constitution and the legal framework. We are also interested in promoting further political dialogue and intens intensifying trade and investment engagement with Malaysia. Last week, as is known, I participated in the summit of the Asia-Pacific Economic Cooperation Forum. It was held with uh, your country presiding over it. Despite the difficulties related to the pandemic, our Malaysian partners have done a lot of work. They prepared a serious package of outcome documents for leaders' approval, including the joint statement on long-term APEC development goals until 2040. We are committed to further strengthening positive ties with Iceland, both on the bilateral basis and in the framework of multilateral organizations. By the way, Iceland currently presides over the Arctic Council, and they're going to give the presidency to Russia next year. We see good opportunities for implementing joint projects in fishing, fish processing and shipbuilding, in innovative technologies, geothermal energy, agriculture. With our northern neighbor, the Republic of Finland, we have traditionally close, truly good neighborhoods. This is true both for the political dialogue and for the cooperation and trade, economic and other dimensions. We with President Sauli Niista regularly and constructively discuss topical bilateral and international issues, including the strengthening of stability and security in the region of the Baltic Sea and in Europe in general. We develop in a consistent manner our relationship with the United Arab Emirates. Let me note that uh, in November 2019 we paid a state visit to Abu Dhabi and held rather successful negotiations with the Emirate leadership. We are ready to maintain the meaningful partnership. We have a lot of areas for cooperation, be it investment, medicine or energy. The cooperation between Russia and uh, the Great, Great Duchy of Luxembourg, Grand Duchy of Luxembourg, is being actively promoted in political, economic, and cultural dimensions. I would like to use this occasion to express my appreciation to Prime Minister Bertel for his initiative to uh, set up a monument to commemorate the Soviet citizens brought by Nazis to the Great Grand Duchy for forced labor during World War II. We noted this fact and the Russian public no valued that very, very much. The peoples of Russia and Montenegro uh, have century-long traditions of friendship and spiritual affinity, and we hope that that's going to be the way for our intergovernmental cooperation. Russia is ready for it. The Republic of Cuba is Russia's trusted partner. Our bilateral cooperation is of strategic nature. We implement large-scale joint projects in energy, metallurgy, transport infrastructure, medicine, where Cuba in some areas is a leading country. We also expand and foster cultural relations. Cuba is well respected in the world scene and our dialogue on the topical foreign policy issues is characterized by high level of trust. We are open to further specific engagement in trade and economic as well as cultural exchanges with the Kingdom of Belgium. It is important that we maintain context on the topical international aspect. This meets our in interests uh, on both sides. Our relationship with the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, one of the leading countries of the Middle East, follows the growing trend. In the recent days, it has become comprehensive uh, and uh, thanks to agreements uh, following our state visit to Riyadh in October 2019. Russia and Saudi Arabia effectively cooperate within OPEC Plus format. They jointly contribute to ensuring the stability of global energy markets. We are very much uh, thankful to His uh, Excellency King. Uh, I would like to congratulate our Saudi counterparts for successfully holding 
G20 summit, we are well aware of the difficulties they face, but we are going to continue working on implementing agreements reached within during the summit. Our relationship with the Republic of Gambia is stable. We are cultivating relationship relations in international issues, strengthening engagement in various areas such as military, technical, and educational ones. With Vatican, we hold a substantial dialogue. It is based on the commitment to traditional human values in the spirit of agreements reached during our meeting with Pope Francis last July. We enhance cooperation in strengthening inter-ethnic and inter-faith peace and concord, countering terrorism, extremism, any forms of racial intolerance. This December, we're celebrating the 60th anniversary of uh, establishing diplomatic relations uh, with the Central African Republic. We we'll sincerely wish the earliest settlement of a difficult situation in the country and support the UN stabilization mission in the CAR. Our relationship with Israel is mutually beneficial, multifaceted. We hold a substantial political dialogue. We hold regular communications with Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu on the topical issues of the international regional agenda. We are in standing contact. Russia and Israel are unified in their determination to maintain the truth of World War II, to counter attempts to falsify history, to forget their memories of the martyrs of Holocaust and all victims of Nazism. It's important that uh, we have established cooperation with relevant organizations between our countries in fighting the coronavirus, including potential supplies and production of the Russian vaccine in Israel. We value our relationship with the sovereign military order of Malta. It is based on uh, unique historical traditions and traditions of cultural and humanitarian engagement. Gentlemen, I have mentioned only some, some aspects of relations between Russia and your states. It's only a small portion of a wide range of engagement with all of your countries. We hope that with your active engagement, these relations will be developing further for the benefit of our people, for the benefit of our countries, for international stability and security. I wish you every success in your endeavors in Russia. All the best and especially it is relevant today, the best of health. Thank you very much and all the best. Congratulate you on the beginning of your work in the Russian Federation.